of my work on the, works on everyone's machine. There's going to be an overview of local development tools. Um, I know we have some people that already have the install of the machine. This is the beginning of the talk because I forget that other people also have to learn about not doing things in the cloud or on live, which we'll talk about in this presentation. So my name is Taryn. I'm the nose. It is pronounced like Karen with a T, which is why that's my name on GitHub. It is Karen with a T because people are spelling Karen enough, and it's a teaching tool. Um, on Drupal.org, I am Nine Lives Black Cat. I did not know that they would be printing that on my badge. That's my gamer tag. I found out the day I got there. <laughs> and I am at Taryn G on Twitter. I live near Dallas, Texas. So y'all will hear a lot of y'all. And just to humanize this a bit, I used to be a front end developer. I'm now a developer advocate. But the things I like to do when I'm not on the computer is studying Japanese, baking, taking cycling and spin classes when I'm not six months pregnant. So. We do a little bit of story time to start this off. This is me when I was a junior developer. I had gigs in back then. I love that shirt. I messed it up. I still wear it anyway. So, long, long time ago, in 2014, I worked at a small department, is what we will say first. Um, we had our servers. This is like my first professional development job, right? And they were like, well, you know about Joomla? Have you used Drupal? And I'm like, no. I said, well, can you do HTML and CSS? I so was like, yes. And they're like, fine. You have a job here now. So it was very exciting. <laughs> so as a junior developer, it was my first dynamic like CMS site. I dabbled with WordPress like on the site builder end. But um, at this place, we had our servers, and they were hosted locally in a closet. So that was the first part of this. But we uploaded everything via FTP. Um, we had different sandboxes that were also hosted. And they were hosted like kind of through the senior developer's computer, but then also in the closet. And I hadn't, I, I had just graduated. Um, I had taught myself web development and then found out that people were giving money to make websites for them. So that was very exciting for me. But I knew how to FTP into things, and I knew that I had a sandbox, and then there was a staging server, and then there was the live environment. So, I needed to test uh, some things that we were doing for this member dashboard, and so I put them on my sandbox. Now, because I was a junior developer and this was like a smaller department, I was also the help desk person. And all of a sudden, my phone starts ringing off the hook. And I answer it, and it's a person saying, hey, my member data looks incorrect. It's saying that I have less years of service than I really do. I was like, okay, well, I'll make this bad, and we'll go find out. So this happened maybe, 15, 20, 30 more times. And it turns out that what I thought was my sandbox environment was actually the live server. And I hard-coded a bunch of people all to the same testing data. So I had to explain that to my senior developer. And then he went to go and write everything. And yeah, I learned a lot about local development and not uploading things to test. The unfortunate part of the situation, however, is that uh, we didn't have any environment indicators, things that would have told me, you know, hey, big red sign, don't do this. And instead of helping me to solve the issue or show me how to do dev for complex sites on my local machine, instead my senior developer locked me out of the dev environment for three years. Um, Sorry. It's a long time. There's some other things that we can talk about after that I'm still bitter about to this day. <laughs> but, you know, this is a story of how, you know, not setting up your teammates for success or setting up your workflows for success can lead to negative consequences. Um, so some of the consequences that we experienced that we had is that as a developer, like, my confidence was shaken at that point. I was like, hey, like, I screwed up this one thing, I mean, there were <laughs> many other things that I would mess up along the way, right? But, like, that was one of my first experiences in the first year, and I was like, you know, I, I messed this up, I should have been testing it differently. Um, I was afraid to make any changes, and I didn't know how to do tests. Um, the updates took a lot longer, because I would get something done, but be afraid to upload it to my sandbox or have somebody see it, and somebody would have to physically come into the office. I also never learned how to use the command line or terminal at the time. Um, and then our trust was eroded on the team. Like I told you, 
it was locked out of the wild environment for several years. Um, it made it difficult for us to work together in a way that would help us to improve the experience for our members. Um, so there are some things that could have prevented it. Uh, us using version control would have been great. Um, at this time, the way that we were doing it, I had learned about Git, but I was told that Git was too resource intensive for us to use and they're just copying my files onto my local computer. There's a reason why I don't work at that place anymore, if you understand what that means. Um, us having environment variables set up would have been helpful, but for the most part, if we would have had local development environments with protocols for updates and code reviews, that would have helped everybody on the team. We could have had a lot more trust between us. I would have had the confidence to know the things that I'm doing and changing are here on my local machine, and this is what happens when it goes through the testing and staging process. Um, I believe that they have changed their practices since then, fingers crossed, but best of luck to them. So, I tell this story, and I'm doing this talk because I understand the value of having these tooling and setups. Um, this is what we're going to go over today, is what local development environments are, a lot of you and your teams should use them, how you can improve your team's workflows with these tools, and how you can increase your developer's confidence and communication with them. Um, some things that we'll also talk about are how it helps with the quality assurance, so communication, and dev tests of mouth. So, number one. So what are local development environments? Well, somebody put, they are a way of the configuring services on your local machine, like a laptop or a desktop, so you can run a website or a web application from your computer. Um, it's very important for the types of sites that we work on. We are all Drupalists in the room. There are folks that work on WordPress sites. But these are much more complex than your HTML or your CSS. Even sometimes um, when you have like React apps and things like that, right? These are much more complex and you need to have your databases set up. Um, and I'm going for a second, but the way that you can just test some features for a simple site or even a simple web application on your computer can't be done the same with a dynamic website experience, um, like a Drupal site. So the reason why you want to use local development tools for this is because, one, they do provide your developers with a safe place to be able to work on feature branches or even experiments of code. We all know that we're not just fixing the websites that we're working on right now. Sometimes there's something new that like marketing might want to test out. Or sometimes you need to upgrade your um, your styling. You might want to upgrade your, sorry, thank you. Um, you might want to update your styling. You might want to test out a new framework. You might even want to test out a new version of PHP because sometimes those things go in the life, right? Um, being able to do that somewhere where it's not exposed to everyone, like the 15,000 members whose information I updated, uh, that's a way that you can perform your tests and not have to worry about inviting risks into this process. Uh, it's also good for QA testing processes. Um, I've worked in shops that have a dev test live set up. I've worked on Azure. I've worked with Git. And at one of the places we had it where people could go in and run, uh, sorry, the QA team could go in, pull down the code on their local machine, and not have to worry about all the different variables of traffic or like network connections when they were just trying to understand does this accessibility fix work or not on the machine. Um, also, some uh, common shared environment mishaps that you can avoid writing over each other's code because we know that you can be all working on different bugs, but they're all in the same area, uh, having conflicting contributions for future fixes. Uh, one place that I worked, we were all working at the same branch for some reason, and it was my branch, and I kept losing my updates to things. Um, so being able to do my work on my local machine both helped us to not have these traffic issues and to help preserve the work that I was working on. And it also really helps being able to test and sign off on one feature at a time. Um, so, we're going to talk a little bit here about web apps and how it facilitates team collaboration. The web apps, if you haven't heard of it, you probably haven't been to a pandemic type in a minute. 
it's a team sport. Web apps is a team sport. Uh, it's a set of practices that bring together developers, your designers, content editors, and other key stakeholders that are part of your team. As much as we might read it as developers, we're not creating websites for ourselves. We're creating them with other people, other people that have concerns like A-B testing, which working on a marketing team after working on a finance team, totally different sets of concerns. As long as the numbers crunched on the finance team, it was great, but I needed to see if the traffic with the blue text or the red text drew more uh, engagement <laughs> working on a marketing site. So, when you've got a web apps culture on your team where you're understanding that we're all working together for something um, anybody whose job it is to change a website in any kind of way now that can be code like a bunch of us developers do they can be your visuals your content your success measurements everyone thinks of themselves as part of one cross-functional team that you can relate toward the samples so a development workflow would look a bit like this in web apps You've got your dev environment, which is best for you to go in, make your code changes, and kind of do your preliminary before it goes to stakeholder testing. You've got your test environment, and you've got your lab environment. But from your dev development environment, you're going to deploy code. You're going from the new code and dev, and then putting that into the test environment. This step is important. As part of this process, because there are times where you'll finish your changes on dev and have shared it with everyone else, and then you want to look in your test environment to see. So you might have it where some of your APIs that are feeding live data are connected to your test environment and your live environment, but not necessarily your dev environment, right? Um, when you go from dev to test, you don't have any surprises that come up in there. Another great thing is that you can take from your lab environment and sync your files in your database back to the test environment so you're able to simulate what the results are in a safe and more sterile environment. And then once you get that done, you'll test and deploy your code to live. Now, we went over that kind of workflow. That's like an overview of like how do I do this, what's that test side. There are some workflows, in my opinion, that especially benefit from doing a local uh, development environment. So, these are going to be teams of multiple developers that work on a project. Um, you know, how, out of the folks that are here, is there anyone that's working like by themselves mostly as a developer? Yeah, right. <laughs> So most of us work with other people. Uh, we're all working on towards similar goals. Um, at the place that I was at, we had two developers on my team. Um, there have been times where I've been the solo person that was working on a particular project, but I was still working like with other folks in an agency. Um, it's also important for when you have projects that are of high complexity. Now, a lot of universities and medium to large businesses have these issues. Um, if you are uh, examples of sites that I've worked on that had high complexity, this, for example, worked on the human side of the United States website, and that's a huge number of pages, number of calls to action, different campaigns that they have, right? And so if you're wanting to make a change to, I did a lot of accessibility remediations, if you're wanting to make a change to how big um, some of the font appears in one spot, you want to make sure that when you're making these changes to your code base, that they're not impacting the entirety of the network of sites without you realizing it. Um, yeah, but universities often will have where they have a theme that is the base for a whole bunch of different departments to use. But there, there might be an upstream that comes down. Um, it's not something where you're just going to push the code, even to just the dev environment, especially not to the lab environment, and then what thousands of sites are negatively impacted. Um, one of the places that I think it's most important for folks to engage in using local development practices is that agencies or partners that are working with contractors and subcontractors. Um, I've learned to this in a little bit. But I think it's especially important for those types of groups to do it because it will allow your developers to download the copies of the site to their local computer. They can work on any kind of PRs on their local machine and only push their code to a development or multi-development environment where it's needed. Um, I've worked on 
some projects more. On the second bullet point here, as a contract worker, your agency can control access to the code. Let's say that you um, are working with someone who's like kind of new to the relationship, and you have a setup where you got your uh, Git repo, and that gives a person access to the code. They can pull it down onto their local machine and be able to make the changes there without needing to upload to the development environment because you might not have the space or the information at that point to allow that person to access your uh, web hosting and web performance provider. Is it necessary to do that? Is it going to introduce risk? Does it cause more workflow problems to do that? Um, I talked about this a bit in my opening story, but for junior developers, when they are able to use these local development environment collaboration tools, um, we will talk about how the pre-configured options that are set up by a lot of these tools for the web hosting providers that you use. As a junior developer, I was working on developing my skills, um, getting better at HTML and CSS and understanding how all of this worked together. And then on top of that, I had to understand scripting. I'm a front-end developer. People have asked me if I wanted to be a full stack developer my entire life. My answer is always no. <laughs> um, and especially very early on in somebody's career, having them be concerned with the project setup and the architecture on top of all the newness that they're already exposed to, it is an overwhelming experience. So giving a person the space to be able to learn and grow and most importantly make mistakes because mistakes will happen is very critical for folks in those roles. And we talked about this a bit with the quality assurance folks, but non-development partners also benefit from these tools. I've seen uh, places where designers are able to pull down uh, new code, uh, sorry, new code from environments, and uh, be able to test, well, <laughs> is this design pixel perfect? Is this the way that I thought it was gonna work by using a local development workflow, even if they weren't able, for some reason, to get into a staging environment. This is pretty brief, working offline, working anywhere. Uh, I live in Texas, and as some of y'all might know, sometimes in the northern part of Texas, we get ice storms. And that means that people don't have internet for a while. Uh, you are able to work on your site independent of your location or internet access. Um, how many of us here work from home? How many of us sometimes like home changes? Yeah, so there, there was a really cool talk I went to uh, where oh, I can't remember Alan's last name. Sorry, I don't know if you're listening to this. But it very much inspired me because he talked about how he went camping and he was working. And I was like, well, how do you do it if you don't have an internet connection if you have a local development environment? So we will go download the code that we need to use and work on and fix his PRs while he's like eating s'mores. That was that was like goals for me. So um, you can also make your changes in a secure environment. Uh, we talked about this, but if you have you're supposed to sterilize your data when it comes down from the database, but if you have some information that you don't need going back up to a server when you're running your tests, having a local development environment lets you have a secure place to be able to test that. We've already talked about testing features with minimal risk. Now that can be for risk for the person that's doing the code. Um, I think I've talked about the horse there. Oh, one thing that I did want to include here as far as in the internet and, uh, sorry, not having an internet connection or even having a slower internet connection. Uh, Danny, we were talking about this a little bit when we were starting that if you are wanting to do a demo or something like that, right, you can do that from your local environment without having to be derailed by the internet or a very slow power charger happening, right? But um, there are also people who are great developers, but they might live somewhere where they have intermittent access to internet. Um, this could be like, you know, poverty happens and it sucks, but they might not have internet at home because they might have had it at the office, or it might be somebody that lives in a rural area, right? I, I've had uh, some great talks with people that live out in the country and are still able to do their um, development work. I, I just think that is very important for including all types of people, like for your diversity, equity, inclusion, with all kinds of great minds that could be working on websites with us. And local development allows them to do more. 
the final chunk of this, we're going to talk about leveraging pre-configured scripts. That is part of local development insofar as two examples that we have here, Lando and DDEV. Um, these are the two that uh, recently, this is a footnote, and this is going to be aged out. So Pantheon had a local development tool called LocalBev, and we actually just announced that it was going into end of life. Um, there won't be any more updates after June 30th of 2023. But these are two tools that have very powerful integrations with our platform and that a lot of folks in the Drupal community do use. Um, Doxa is in there as well. Some people use it, but not as many people. But then I'm also talking about these. So this is an example of a typical local development or web apps work for a lot of folks here. Um, you'll end up downloading whichever local development tool that you like. Um, there are some different requirements for each one. I'll talk about them briefly. But for Pantheon sites, and I'm talking about Pantheon sites because I work at Pantheon, um, you'll make sure that you have your SSH key and your machine token synced from your Pantheon site. And you also need to make sure that you have at least one backup on your site. Both of the tools depend on having at least one backup because you'll pull that down to be able to enable your, um, your mobile site to mimic your site on the server. Uh, you'll pull down a Git clone of your site's code from the Pantheon repo, and then pull down your site to your machine with a local development tool. So the benefits here, when you are onboarding a new and novice teammate to a project, having these pre-configured scripts already done, working, um, sorry, having these pre-configured scripts done, the folks at Lando and DDEV are dedicated to making sure that all kinds of local development, sorry, all kinds of open source developers can do their work. And so as a result, it's been tested by both the community, the people that are on the team, um, you don't have to do as I did early on and try to figure out, well, does this work? Is this the line that I need? Uh, your new people in your team don't have to worry about that. And you're also replicating your live server stacks offline and the local machine. Um, but that is going to reduce your overhead, your real time to project start. Because we know that sometimes even just downloading the code and getting it running, that can take a lot of time. And it takes you away from being able to do the of getting things done and moving on to the next thing. Um, it also sets a base of what to expect and all the settings that your team is using can be shared amongst everyone. Like you, I'll show you in a minute, but you just upload your configurations to your repo. And so when somebody comes on, it's like, hey, go to this repo, download this, read the readme, let's go. It's pretty great. Sorry, I'm having flashbacks for the first time I worked on something that just worked because I needed it to work and it was a great experience. And like we said, many tools have integrations with popular web platforms. So I recommended let them know and do because uh, they're already used by a lot of our developer customers and community members. Um, I've talked about most of these things, but um, in particular for Pantheon, Lando and DDEV integrate with our Terminus command line tooling. Um, and they allow you to specify your environment setup if you want to try different versions of PHP, especially important if you are helping a client upgrade. <laughs> uh, I have a friend that is, I knew her from high school and I posted that I worked on a Drupal site and she's like, how do you know what Drupal is? I'm like, how do you know what Drupal is? You work at a clinic. And she told me, uh, well, we're all in Drupal 7 like everybody else knows where those, right? Um, but we're on Drupal 7 and we need to update. And so they've got PHP that's out of sync. They've got the rules module is giving them the rules right now. But being able to pull from the site that they have and do these uh, fixes on my local machine, their site is not experiencing any downtime. And we've got a medical facility that's constantly bringing people in, um, setting up appointments. It's important for them to still stay up even while their site is being fixed. Uh, they're not on Pantheon yet, but, um, but yeah. So some requirements for Lando, just going over this in case people want to experiment, experiment with it. For Mac OS, you need to be on version 10.13 or later. Uh, it does work on Windows, which is great. You need 10 Pro Plus or the equivalent with Hyper-V enabled. And then for Linux, you can use kernel version 4x or higher. So DDEV, there's a little bit more information here. So it works on four 
ish different types of operating systems, Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. But it also works with Gitpod, which enables cloud development. But this talk is not about cloud development, but I thought that was pretty neat. You just go to Gitpod and like, hey, I want to use DRev. And it'll work. So um, with Mac OS, you there are two different workflows. So you can use it with Docker Desktop, and it does require that you have Mac OS Catalina 10.15 or higher. But if you're underneath 10.15, you can use Kalima. And I feel like a lot of people um, enjoy using Kalima instead of Docker Desktop, sometimes because money. <laughs> but um, I believe that Lando is working toward Kalima integration. So that is a development that we're all looking for. And you can still use it with Windows. Uh, you can use any recent edition of Windows Home or Windows Pro, but you do need to have Docker Desktop for that. Um, and have the WSL2 backend. We we'll talked about this. So, when you're sharing your setup with your team, um, if you're on Pantheon, you'll need to make sure that you have your Pantheon YAML, file, YAML without the A file updated so it meets your team's needs. Also, make sure to update your README. Readme's are important, that's why they're called Readme's, but that can help your teammates perform any kind of necessary updates that they have. Uh, the machine tokens, and you'll upload your pandan.yaml, yaml, and lambda.yaml or ddev.yaml files to your team share get repo. Um, so, uh, one thing to note here so on Pantheon, we have a git repo that is hosted inside, but what a lot of what I have seen a lot of teams do in the time that I was in, uh, an active developer is that these files will be in a parallel Git repo, so that way they can be accessed when and it can uh, coordinate with other PRs and reviews. Sorry, your PRs and reviews. Uh, it's like an ATM machine. Your PRs and requests, and that detail will allow your teams to easily see and modify uh, code. You can also use GitLab. It's not just GitHub. Here are some resources. Um, if you are wanting to test and experiment your, on your site in a Pantheon sandbox to test out local development tools, uh, we have some guides for that in the documents. I recently did a video that is an overview of local development tools. Um, and we'll be doing like some walkthroughs of how to use this with Lando and how to use DDEV. Um, these last two links are for, and I'll make the size available, these last two links are for the integration with Pantheon and Lando and Pantheon and DDEV. They have really robust documentation to help people get started um, to do even more complex things. So, and make sure you use uh, your community resources. I went to a workshop yesterday with Mike and Ella on how to use DDEV. Um, as your local development environment tool, it was like second level, and I learned a bunch of really quick great stuff. So, the trainings are available in our community, and that's what I got for now. Thank you. And I'll take any questions. Do you know off the top of your head? So, do you have them both out? We take recipes for your health. We have a Pantheon platform. Mm -hmm. Is there, is there more support on one versus the other? Are they pretty even as far as the premium recipes? I think they're pretty even on part of the premium recipes. Um, being fair to my friend Paul, who's in the room, they recently made some updates to their uh, integration for platform.sh. So, yes. Yep. They're, I think they all have equal support from Lando and DDEV. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 And so you can go in and like still make changes to code just the way that you would do it on your local. Um, you can type in code, my brain is freezing, but um, I have used Git, Gitpod when I took a class from Debug Academy where we were learning about Drupal modules. Um, essentially, it's got your IDE in the browser and the cloud. So it's got both your IDE and also your 
like development, environment, and all those facts, all in one browser. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Okay.